What's up guys? Welcome back to the Team Swim Circus live video. There is something very special here. We're doing a how to hand trap guide here. Um, so this is a something that I've been working on for a little bit now with my crew. Um, wanting to make this better for you guys. I want to be able to put up some good content for everyone to you know be able to understand what to hand trap. Before we dive in, if you like, comment, subscribe. And if you guys want to see some more content like this, let me know down, down in the comment section down below as well as what other decks you guys want to be seeing in this hand trap guide. And we'll make sure to add them the next time we do it. Uh, so diving off, we're going to start off with Unchained. Unchained is a very popular deck that has come out um, after the Dune format, you know, being re with a cards like Yama as well as Shima and then the Shorma. Um, deck has a lot of good points here. So we're, the way that we're going to be doing this is we're going to be putting like these three cards here, which are like the blow cards of the hand traps. Blow hand traps of the format. We got Nibiru, you know, stopping a lot of turns. We got Droll stopping turns as well. Um, and then D-Shifter, you know, just changing how the game essentially works cards not wanting to hit the graveyard so um off the bat we're going to start off with ash so ash is very good against the escape of the unchained it really this is the first trap you activate so let's say you have trap shawarma in hand um you activate you set the trap activate shawarma pop the trap the first thing you want to do you can ash the trap it's very good um for doing that because you're stopping a body from the field you know getting stopping those, those two bodies they have to either commit another normal um or a, a normal and then go into the yama Another option is you can either bell um, the Shyama or you can actually bell Yama as well. A lot of time it is like chain blocked or it's on like your opponent's turn or your turn there. So it's not always the most impactful. But DD crowing presumptively the Yama or hitting a Shyama can be very, very good in the graveyard as well. Um, and then we're going to go moving on to the, the imperm section is what I call it. And you do see the Veiler, uh, Mourner, and then the imperm. Um, you cannot imperm rage. And I know in the... In the tra like little trailer there, uh, I'm I'm showing Ghost Mourner on and Valor. You can and not Mourner these, you know. It, you mean yep, you can, but it's not gonna do anything. Um, I guess you could also like you could Mourner the Wave King Caesar and then Nib if you really wanted to. Um, but other than that, you're really gonna be saving Imperm a lot of the time for your turn, and then you can like Imperm the Rage or the Caesar, or uh, or the Griffin if they go for the Griffin play instead. A lot of time you want to like hit the Moonlight and the Veiler against the Yama. And then for like Nib, Droll, and Shifter. Shifter, I mean, Nib is very good. They can play around it. Um, and like, it, it, they can play through it, I guess, is not really the best way to say it. But it does make them burn a lot of resources and their grind game is not the best. If you have Nib and another Hand Trap, you're doing very well against them. Um, you can also hit the, the little the level 3. I forgot the, the little purple one. You can hit that with Imperm as well, which is really good. Droll is not the greatest. Um, I wouldn't side Droll in, but we see a lot of players playing the Dark Contract package, and Prosperity is very popular as well in the deck. So if they start off with a Contract, um, and then you can just hit them with Droll, they're not going to get their Yama Search as well. If they have the the uh, like a Prosperity in the hand, they will be losing out on that. And then obviously, you know, D Shifter. Um, it stops the grind game, as I mentioned earlier. You know, you want if you banish the Shima, they can't have that. You know, the escapes are not the greatest. Uh, I guess the traps are not the greatest, and you lose a lot of resources, as well as Yama being gone, and then Rage as well. Um, you know, not being able to reborn back those monsters really do hard, and a lot of the effects, you know, do stuff when they hit grave, like the Caesar and then the uh, Rhino Warrior as well. So. Uh, you'll be stopping a lot of those stuff. It's not the greatest, of course. You know, they can still play through it, but Shifter is still very good against the deck. Um, second up is Purely here. Um, so, obviously, you know, starting off, you want to Ash my friend Purely if they start off with it, but it's also very important um, when, if they have the e Noir on the field, you can Ash a Quick Play spell, and they cannot set the Eep up because it has to directly um, respond to the to the Quick Play spell. That's just important to note. Um, a lot of the time you want to imperm the Perlili or the uh, Eperly Noir here. Um, and then, you know, you can crow the Yeep if you want to. But a lot of the time they'll just chain it. You can crow the, the also the targets for Pure Lily. I, I forgot a little one here. But yeah, Pure Lily can target, like, let's say Sleepy. If you crow the Sleepy, they won't get the summon, which is very nice. Um, so it's, it's, it's really good. Um, a lot of the time they're playing like Prosperities or other stuff like that. So you can Droll the deck. Um, as well as like you know if you really want to uh, it can stop like my friend purely and it can also, also stop the lily as well as the uh, purely so like a lot of time it, it is quite good if they normal summon the purely after the effect search for my friend you draw them it's, it's very good there as well um, it does stop like a little bit of the recursion as well as if they're playing some of the discard packages like the uh, 
um, the Shadal stuff like that. You can uh, you can actually stop them from getting in that stuff as well because they won't be getting any of their effects when they're discarded. They'll be going to the banished. I guess, well, they, I guess they won't be drawing. Uh, and then that does follow into the Shifter here. So Shifter is very good to this deck because of the fact that it also stops your spells a lot. Um, so they won't be having the Pure Lily um, or Pure Lily, whatever you want to call it. They won't be able to add with those as well as you won't be having the effects of like Plump stuff to be able to attach from the Graveyard as well. And uh, you can't actually add back with Pure uh, My Friend Purely because the cards are not in the Graveyard. Um, and then of course Eep will be banished so I won't be able to add either. A lot of the time if you actually run your opponent down on like having only like some builds play three and three but there's some builds only playing two of the per lilies so if you end up like getting rid of all five of those monsters under shifter um you're pretty much guaranteed to win the game at that point nib isn't the greatest against this deck because they normally don't summon five times but it's also very important to play around the anima zone with this deck because people are playing it now for flu um really the sad part is there's lots of parts where you can't hit this deck but eagle in here is the choke point of the deck um, a lot of the time, if they do start off with Advent, um, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to Ash it a lot of the time. I don't know if it's necessarily correct, but let, let's say they search for a Field Spell. It's very good, um, so a lot of the time I just want to Ash it. I hope they don't have another bird in hand or they don't have a big bird, and then uh, their turn really can just end right there. As well as, like, you know, it is banished for cost, so it, it does, like, come up a lot as well. And then, you know, obviously you want to Imperm, Veiler, uh, the Eaglin. Mourner is not useful in this matchup because they are special, not special summon monsters. There, so we do not want to play Mourner at all, as well as like DD Crow just being very, very bad um, in this matchup. Uh, Nibiru, great. They don't have Barrier Statue anymore, so they're going to be summoning five times um, a lot of the time, as well as Droll and Lockberg, you know, very, very classic. Uh, Droll being good against Thunder, everyone knows that. Um, and then, of course, Shifter is not good because it's a Shifter deck. Now we have Rescue Ace. So uh, Rescue Ace is a newer matchup that gets very different post um, Age of Overlord because they'll be starting playing the, the Bolo stuff. Um, so this is like only for now. We'll, we will be updating that once the Age of Overlord comes out. But essentially Ashing the Hydrant um, is very good. But if they start off uh, if with like lit Airlifter, I am wanting to Ash the Emergency a lot of time as well. It does, does help out a lot. And then, of course, you know, you want to DD Crow the emergency um, so it's not able to get the effects. And then, obviously, you know, you want to Imperm the Turbulence. And then you have, like, a Veilers as well as the Mourners for, for other stuff like Turbulence as well. You know, setting four of them deck is very good. If you have multiple hand traps, you know, you can hit the Hydrant as well. Um, but a lot of the time it will be protected from other stuff because of the fact that, uh, that it's, like, you know, being able to protect it here. And then, of course, we have different variants of it. So we have the Gigantic, which is going to try to Ibli lock you. We have the Proxy, which is going to be protecting the Hydrant with a Muddy Mud Dragon. And then we also have the Firewall build as well. They all do die to uh, Imperm and then Veil. Uh, well, I guess they die to Imperm as well as Nib. Um, you know, it does does help the deck a lot. A lot of players are playing those kind of stuff. So Nib is very good against the deck if they are on those you know different builds of Rescue Ace. And then Droll is decent. You know, it's not the best against the deck, but they do add a lot and stuff like that. So they play Prosperity as well. So if they Prosper and then you hit them with it, it can be quite good. And then, of course, Shifter uh, Shifter hurts this deck a lot, um, you know, not having any of your stuff in the graveyard, losing their emergencies there. Um, and then, you know, Preventer not hitting the grave so they can't summon back, not having anything to banish from Turbulence or Airlifter is just, or Preventer is just very good there um, for the deck overall. Uh, with Droll, it really depends on like what the player has. Like if if they start with Emergency, um, Droll's not very good uh, for it because you know they're, they're like it's gonna be their first add. Um, but if they have Airlifter, it's like, decent because they search Emergency, then you hit them with Droll, and they all of a sudden, if they don't have Hydrant, they're out of they're out of Hydrant. You know they have no access to it um, with the Emergency there. Um, and then if you like normal summon Hydrant and you just hit them, they search, hit them with Droll. It's very good against the deck. So. Uh, like if they have emergency they have it at that point but a lot of the time you just want to be able to bank on it and uh droll droll can be very good next for labyrinth um so labyrinth is one of our as the first trap we're gonna be covering over trap deck in this uh this video here um and there's a few things that i'm missing i'm missing so 
Uh, Ash Blossom is very good against both the welcomes there. Um, you know, hitting Bell Welcome as well as Welcome is very good. And then Bell, of course, can be hitting the big welcome because there's someone from the graveyard. DD Crow is good against the Kukla because a lot of builds are only playing two of it or less. So, you know, wanting to be able to, to hit that. Um, as well as, you know, if you do have a crow and they're trying to add back a clock, obviously hit it. But La Lady Labyrinth has to actually chain directly to a trap card. So if you have anything to interact with Lady Labyrinth at the time, let's say it's not even that good of a card. Um, if you're, let's say they activate Welcome and then you have a DD crow in your hand and they have La Lady Labyrinth on the field, you can actually preemptively crow the Ku clock so that Lady Labyrinth cannot ch chain to the trap because you have a response to the trap. So you're going to stopping that Lady Labyrinth there as well, having them the force to have another trap being activated there, which is hard. And then, of course, I forgot to put it in this here, but you can obviously imperm the Ariana and stuff like that, which it does come up in the deck. And then, of course, Shifter is very good against this, um, especially in the furniture builds. It ends up like shutting the deck down completely. You know, you lose all your furniture to the Banish Zone. You'd have no recursion. Big Welcome becomes like you have to be very careful for the grind game and then Welcome Labyrinth. You know, doesn't able to get its reset stuff as well. So, very good to this deck. Um, now going on the Chimera. If you guys are noticing, it's a D shifter format, baby. Um, you know, a lot of players are playing the Brand Chimera build. And I know with uh, with after Age of Overlord, we'll see a little bit different Chimera build. We might be seeing or Chimera, however you guys want to pronounce it. I know people in the comments will always say it's Chimera or Chimera. I don't care. Um, it, it's a deck. So a lot of the time you don't actually want to ash the uh, the brand infusion if they're playing the branded build. You want to save it for the mirror swords knight because the mirror sword gets them so much uh, advantage as well as gets them the big wing bet from that. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want big wing to go plus two here. So uh, I'll be either stopping the mirror swords knight if I have ash. You know I might be ashing brand infusion, which is either going to get me a, them a mirror jade or a rin brum, and then you know rin brum will be able to be doing some crazy stuff as well as getting the level four. In the graveyard which can then set up their stuff but uh, i want to be saving the imperm and i want to stop the vet from that i want to be able to stop that chimera fusion because chimera fusion is insane you know being able to set up a guardian chimera during my turn and then getting a hand rip during their turn um or i guess hand rip first and then chimera is just pretty insane but you can bell chimera fusion as well as dd crowing it out of the graveyard so that they're not able to set it up afterwards you have to be careful though because if they do have like a mirror swords in the graveyard um, or the the whatever like the little cornfield. This does target, so it will be negate and will be able to negate. So have to be a little bit more careful with the crow there. Um, but yeah, it definitely stop the mirror swords on, as well as the big more from that is definitely the uh, the play there. Um, and now droll and nib and shifter. Obviously, you know if you shifter, they can't add back chimera fusion. The mirror swords on it won't have the negates as well as I don't believe that the. Like these have to all hit the graveyard for them to be, yeah. If it's in the graveyard as a fusion material, you can then special target one in your graveyard to summon it. So Shifter is very good into this deck. Um, Droll is all right. You know, some builds are playing the patchwork and then Droll just becomes a lot better. And then Nib, they can still play through Nib a lot of the time. They won't like, overextend, but Nib can be quite good against the deck, but they can also, you know, summon during your turn with the Chimera Fusion as well. Now for good old Branded. One of my favorite decks, but unfortunately not the greatest this format. I um, mean, you know, we still have the Gaming Puppet live, but there's just a lot of better decks right now. Um, so obviously, you know, the old, old famous Ash Brand Infusion, still amazing. You know, luckily we do have Chimera now. So, you know, our opponent sometimes, or I guess when we play, you your opponent doesn't know exactly if you're on, let's say, Branded, if you just start off with a Brand Infusion. So you got, sometimes get very lucky. And just, you know, holding Ash, not for Brand Infusion, can be very nice if you just start off with it. Um, and then, like, the imperm stuff there's a lot of imperm targets so if the uh if your opponent doesn't have lost you know obviously um veiling mooring uh, the lubelion is very very nice um but if it's not up a lot of times i just want to be able to hit the luber let's say they normal summon a luber i think the effect i will I'll most likely hit it with the veiler or the imperm just for the fact that if they do search the lost then all of a sudden it's not that great of a card anymore um and then of course quem quem being able to send quem is an insane card there's a lot of different builds of branded, you know, the, no longer the, on the fusion builds. We see some builds playing the synchro stuff, and then Quem is just like the key card here, and that card's just insane. Dumping Albaz is super underrated, or even dumping um, the Cartesia and being able to summon back the Cartesia 
once like they sink or summon it's just absolutely insane or even activate into your servant um it gets just so much like quem is just absolutely insane so wanting like to either bell the target crow or crow the target crowing the albion um in the graveyard so it doesn't get its effects um this can be very good you obviously cannot bell the albion um but just wanting to hit like a bunch of the quem stuff quem is a very insane card so watch out for that card as well when you're playing um and then nib nib is very good in the synchro build because they can't really always make up a board you know they will have the graveyard effects that will activate you know getting their stuff um, but you want to get like quem off the board for the synchro build you're doing fairly well with the deck um, and then obviously it's still good against the fusion build a lot of the time but uh, they will still be able to play as well as it doesn't end their board like if they're setting up like Granganol, um, Mirror Jade, and like Brandon Red, they'll still be able to play. So, you know, be careful when you're playing Nib. Uh, it doesn't always end their turn as much as we wish it did. And then D-Shifter. D-Shifter is very good to this deck because of the fact that Mirror Jade sends for cost. So they can't activate it. You know, Quem, you, know, you can't target the graveyard if there's nothing to target in the graveyard. And then Albion doesn't hit the grave, so you can't really activate its effects. Um, but they still will have Lubellion to be able to shuffle them back. So it's just important to note that you know they still can play it's just very hard to play under it next up is Kashtira. i actually think this deck is going to still be represented maybe not the level it was very very high um you know tier zero deck this deck can actually turn into a brave Kashtira build um which you know this is just in theory so that's why you see the drago the drago sack here so obviously we're still ashing the theosis um you don't really want to ash unicorn because they can just rip your extra deck and then of course you don't want to like you can ash the uh the copy of fenrir but normally i want to be imperming the unicorn there uh, or anything stopping the spells is very very still impactful as well as stopping draco sack so if you end up imperming or mournering the draco sack they're not able to make those two tokens and then turn those two tokens into a copy of um the ba link and then the BA link can send like Temple. So it's like actually important to stop the Draco Sack if they're going for it. If you see them trying to make it. Because that can like just lead to an F0 as well as the Adventure Engine. And that's just very OP. Um, and obviously now that Arise Heart's out of the out of the deck. Thanks to the ban list. Come on, Konami. Um, Nib is still very good into the deck. They can't just make a big monster anymore and play around Nib. They're going to overcomplicate their board and they're going to play into Nib. Because they have to want to set up something unless they want to end like unicorn fender pass and then droll is still good against the deck because you know nothing really changed they search they search they search uh, especially if they activate temple and search for right hitting them with that you know if they have like a unicorn it just stops them right in their plays now we have our first a uh a first uh cyber deck which is going to be salmon great so salmon great is a deck that really got upgraded with the uh, the, the soul burner um, packs uh, and there's lots of different interaction but they kind of do the same stuff a lot of the cyber stacks are very much similar but they want to like sign up mining is an insane card you know searching for any um, any cyber monster a lot of the time I want to ash that but there's also a chance I want to ash the fire but if you do ash the fire they are not fire lock so even spinning can make a decent board at that point so you have to be careful of that um, but if you do hit the bay links, you know, this is like a really hot topic. I know people don't really want to say, oh, it's just a field spell. If you hit the it, if you hit the bay links and they don't hard open the field spell or find a way to draw it like with the weasel, they're not going to be able to double uh, link four or get wolf double linked. Um, so they won't be able to add back the trap. And like it can be quite good if they like, say that they dump um, the, ri the roar and then it's not able to reset itself. It can be very good. And then obviously you you want to be able to bell the will will is always crazy to bell. Um, I don't really find it really good to be hit the gazelle all the time. I feel like they can play through it anyways, so I, I tend to not wanting to hit the gazelle there unless like it's in a simplified game state. Obviously you know nib and the cyber cyber stack, we all know droll is not the greatest. Um, they have lots of ways. If they start off with sign up mining pitch, droll is like quite good. Um, but a lot of the time, like if they start with fire and you just stroll them on fire, or they go standby phase, activates the um, the circle. It doesn't seem that great, but you do stop like one or two searches, which is pretty nice. You know, stopping the bailings as well as like a heat soul can be quite good. And then shifters, obviously another FTK versus any uh, any cyber stack. 
as you guys know, you know they love their graveyard and uh, they have no access to it. So the next cyber deck is good old Math Mech. This deck, even with circular at one, doesn't seem to really die. Uh, so obviously, you know, I'm gonna say it again. We want to ash the cyber mi sign at mining, um, but a lot of the focus is on the Primathic Allen version here. So this card lets you add as well as tribute off a monster. So if I have like Ash Imperm, I'll normally save the Ash for the add of the circular. And then I want to save the Imperm for the Allen version because it has a secondary effect. People are going to forget about a lot. Um, as well as like if they normally some diameter, I, I could hit that with Imperm as well. But a lot of the time I want to stop the Allen version as the main focus because it just ends up letting them search for anything. It's just very good. Um, and obviously you can DD Crow the Super Factorial or Vel the Super Factorial if you don't want to stop it. It does target three in the graveyard. So very, very nice against the deck. Um, and then obviously, you know, Droll if they overextend, if they go for the length place, Droll is very, uh, Nib's very nice. Droll is good against the deck because of the fact that you know, a lot of the time they want to start, if they start off with the sign at mining, it's very good. You know, you're stopping their circular as well as their Allen version, which means that they don't hard open the Super Factorial. They're not getting to it. Um, and there's like a bunch of decks. Like they also play the uh, the they either play with the firewall stuff, or they can also play with the copy of um, of small world. So once you just draw them on that, they'll be normally like stopping in their tracks and only going for like a smaller board. And at that point, you can uh, you're really not getting like either hand ripped and pop your field and and spell and traps. And then shifter once again, you know, very good against any kind of deck you can't target three in the graveyard if there's nothing in the graveyard um, and stuff like that so very very good shifter needs to get hit to be honest moving on to another cyber stack here Marincess. we're not going to forget about you water boys um dd crow uh, we'll start off with ash so ash is going to sea angel if you want to stop from playing the spells obviously ashing the sign up mining is great um Imperning Sea Angel is very good. Uh, Blue Slug is not the greatest because they have so many ways of adding back from the graveyard or having um, the graveyard there. But literally stopping Sea Angel stops either the field spell or dive, which is a huge way of you know continuing their plays. It's either going to give them a spell and trap negate or just a way to you know play through um, like adding adding other extenders. Uh, if you stop the triangle here, you will be stopping the trap. So you know Wave is very nice because it does make them un unaffected by monster or unaffected by your opponent's card effects. So being able to stop that kind of imperm that they hold in the hand is really nice as well. A lot of builds are playing two of it though, so you have to be careful of that. You know, there is a chance that if you do imperm this, they had the second one already in the hand, um, which can be quite problematic. And then, you know, you want to be hitting like either Bell or Crow on the Coral Enemy add back. Or, you know, if you have a Crow um, or a Bell, you can actually save it for the follow-up and hit the coral triangle a lot of times if you have cracked their board and they have nothing for the follow-up hitting that triangle can actually just like end their turn um, it's just very good uh, it stops the follow-up and it's just absolutely huge you know something back to um, is very nice and then of course nib cooks the deck if they are not on uh, any more extenders you know if they have burned through their extenders nib is very good but be careful because it does only sometimes require like one or two cards and they have like a couple hand traps in their hand so just very good. Be pay attention when you're playing against a cyber stack. They'll, they'll have a lots of hand traps a lot of the time. Droll is all right. It, you know, if they start with sign up mining, you're going to be stopping the sea angel, um, and then you can stop a few other effects as well. You know, stopping the triangle is very good, um, but a lot of time it's not the best hit. And then shifter once again. You know, these this decks add back a lot from the graveyard, and if you stop their graveyard effect, it's very good for you, um, as as always with the cyber stack. Moving on to Rika Sun Avalon. This deck has been picking up a lot of steam. You know, the plants have been sown. Um, Ash on sowing, very good. Stopping Jasmine with impermanence tends to uh, to be pretty decent, to be honest. But if the Rika player starts off with a Glamour, odds are that their hand's pretty trash or they're just trying to bait out your Ash. Um, so a lot of the time, I would just Ash that. And if they have it, like they have it. Um, but they tend to not want to start off with Glamour. They want to be able to set up something else and then activate Glamour to get like max um, efficiency out of it. Now, Crow and Bell have a weird aspect in this deck because um, there's lots of different targets that you want to be able to hit. Uh, you can either Crow or Bell the Strena uh, or the Princess, uh, like 
but you're gonna have like the effects. If Sven is gonna summon himself back, you can crow or bell it. And if they don't have the princess on the field, they can't. Or if they've already activated princess and that tributed off the Strena, um, if you didn't or if you didn't have a way to like crow the the princess to stop the negate, um, hitting the Strena will stop like the Hyperion or the level eight that tributes. So that can be quite nice as well. Or if you really want to, you can actually uh, on the reborn you could crow the Sun Seed, and that can be quite a uh, quite like detrimental to their link up climbs it'll sometimes make them not able to go into the jasmine and that's very good for the deck so with the blow cards nib is quite good but if they have the sun on the field it does trigger it so it's not always the greatest you know they'll get a free monster out of it uh, but it can be quite nice in the right times droll is good against the deck because they do add a lot you know if they you droll on the sewing uh, search it can be quite good um, as well as like if you end up if they start with activating glamour and you let it go through and then you just draw them all the time their turn can end because uh, they will want to go for the sun seed line um, but you can obviously see what they search for before you uh stop it like before you draw them so if they search for like a mood on even in that case droll is still very good because you are stopping the con con um, which is very nice as well and then obviously not being able to search for jasmine is very nice and then shifter uh, you know, this deck does die to a lot of stuff. So, unfortunately, under Shifter, it can set up some boards, but it does struggle because obviously Strana doesn't get tributed, can't summon itself back. Princess not in the graveyard. It still has the hand effect. So, you know, you have to be attention when you're playing against that. But then they can't summon out back any of the Sunseed stuff, and that's very good against the deck. So, moving on to Infernoble. I'm not even sure how this deck, like, every time I play against this, I feel super overwhelmed. But it's quite basic here. So like if you have Valor Imperm, you do not want to hit Imperm, at least with the Neo Space Connector. But if you have like Ash or Valor, you're kind of forced to if they do start off with the connector, because it's gonna get ripped regardless. So you might as well stop the link too, because once they do that and they get it, they're gonna be able to go into an Isold. And then at that point you're like you know, you're getting hand ripped for one, so you might as well stop it. So rather than getting, getting letting them have a free Isold day, you know, having forcing them to have the extender end up hitting it but if you do have imperm you do not hit the connector connector can only return monsters so your imperm will be safe and you'll just be revealing an imperm and then laughing at them when they go into their ice sold um if they start off with the durandal i kind of want to ash that but otherwise i want to ash the museum museum is a very nice card and then dd crow is really weird in the deck it doesn't have that many spots that it can't hit but I find a lot of time wanting to DD Crow, the Phoenix Blade can be quite good. Because um, they do loop this a few times, and it's just it's really nice. Uh, Nib, Nib is good against the deck, obviously. Um, but hand traps overall are not very nice against the deck. You really want to have like a, a copy of Dark Lord No More. Because they do have a way that they can set up and negate with Gear Freed. Uh, so that before the fifth summon sometimes. So Nib's not always the greatest. Droll is very good against the deck because there's have so many ways of searching um, and drawing cards that, you know, just being able to shut off their turn. It's a combo deck. Droll is good against combo decks. And then obviously Shifter. Shifter is pretty average. You know, it does stop a lot of the stuff. Um, but they can still play through it. They have some boards and they do make Baguska. So there's always that. So now we're going back to Menadium or Mid Dome here. Mid Dome has, is this like Pile Synchro deck to be honest. Um, so there's different variations here you want to hit. Uh, you really want to stop the room heart because of the fact that like, you know, it it, it ends up getting so much. You if you imperm it, they end up knocking you to search their tuners or whatever they want, and then you can't really stop it. Ashing the planets stops the vista access, and if you stop the vista access, you're in a great game. Uh, as well as you know, if you do see a vista and you have a crow hitting it with dd crow actually stops them from able to get uh their fusion onto the field which is very nice um and then obviously you can bell the scare claw so that if when they do link away for it um they won't be able to have access for it uh and then you know having like there's just so many different targets in the deck if they're obsessioning and you have ash like right away you can ash it and then sometimes will stop you from getting the clarium but a lot of the time they just have something else in hand you know they do start with five cards in hand as well um, and then if they're playing the Fenrir stuff, I guess I should mention this in the Kashtir section, you don't want to Ash Kashtir Fenrir 
you know, it is the engine card of the format. So I really want to just leave Fenrir alone. Let them search for the one card, and if they have a discard, they have a discard. Um, plus, it always lets you hit the droll. Nib is very good into the deck, but they can summon Barone quickly. So a lot of time, if you do not have another hand trap, um, it will be dead. Droll can shut down absolutely some hands. There are some hands that do play around the droll or play through the droll, um, but most of the time it will be shutting off the deck. And then D Shifter once again is just very good. You know, it does shut off the fusion, and then there's a bunch of other stuff that it does hurt as well. Um, you know, you lose the Scareclaw stuff. No more arrive arrival, I think it's called Scareclaw arrival. Um, it just it's just good all around. D Shifter is pretty nice. So now Dragon. Dragon is still a deck, and it's still going to be a deck forever. Nothing that Konami can do can really stop this deck. We did lose the Magnemuts as well as the Chaos Space. Um, so obviously, Chaos Space is not going to be put on the list. But if they do activate Chaos Space right away, feel free to Ash it. It will always feel rewarding. Um, but stopping Regain is huge. So like, there's so many like, good points of, like, of Dragons. They have so many amazing cards. But really here, like... Regain is insane. If you can stop the regain, let's say you stop the regain from summoning back at the Magnum, that's how you they loop it. So, you know, they are at one Magnum, but a lot of time they can even have regain on the field and then dump the Magnum with the copy of, like, let's say, um, Soranir. And then they can just loop it with the regain. So, you can view just Bell their target or you just crow the target. It just be very good. Uh, it's huge. And if you can get rid of the regained in the graveyard, um, a lot of times they will lose. Ash and Lebelion can be very nice as well. Um, you know, wanting to stop them searching. If they start off with Lebelion search, if you Ash that, a lot of times they will have to like overextend their board. Um, there's just a lot of good choke points for it. And I don't hate crowing Lebelion. If they have like Sornir on the field and you crow the Lebelion right away, um, a lot of times they'll have to like either have another one in the hand to use to tribute off or find a way to dump it with like Ravine. But that's going to bring us to over to like Striker Dragon and Ravine, uh, Romulus. A lot of the times, their plays rely on getting um, Ravine on the field because they can dis they discard a card in their hand that also gets an effect, like Absoroter or like a Lubelion in their hand as well if they've already used it. And then you get so many pluses through that there, as well as like discarding other copies of um, of Safert as well, you know, so they can add back cards. This comes up a lot. So I want to be normally stopping the Romulus. Um, and then Striker Dragon, if, they, if they've already normaled, um, I, I don't hate Imperming Striker Dragon. But if they have not normaled, I want to stay away from Strikering, uh, from even interacting at all with Striker Dragon. It's just not worth it because they can have the normal summon Rocket in the hand. Um, and then Nib obviously is very good, but it does trigger Seals as well. Um, Nib Bash is very nice. Droll is very good to the dragons in some hands. Other hands, they can play through it. And then, of course, D Shifter is just insane. I keep feeling I'm repeating myself. It, this is D Shifter's format. If your deck can play it, you obviously play it. But, you know, stopping it, not getting their regained access, not getting Lubelion access, not getting, you know, any of the striker plays, not getting the Romulus. I guess doesn't Romulus doesn't really care. But, you know, you lose Chaos Space, you lose all the Bistials, and stuff like that is just absolutely huge um, against this kind of matchup. Now we're moving on to Sword Soul, you know, the rogue deck that everyone loves. Um, and there's not a lot of stuff that do actually hit this deck. So obviously Imperming or Valoring the Mogi is very good. You can't Mourner it because it's not special summoned. Um, unless obviously it is by like a uh, Bax here or something like that, then of course you can. Um, but like you always want to stop the Mogi because it does let you get a draw as well as a search, which is very nice, you know, a plus two, plus a negate is kind of crazy. Um, and then we have like Ash Blossom. So there's really only two targets. You can debate that you want to Ash like it desires. But other than that, like I want to Ash the Emergency to search or the Ecclesia. But if they start off with Emergency, I don't always feel like if, I mean, if I have Ash and Imperm in hand, I'm not going to really Ash the, the Emergency. Um, a lot of the time, like you can get punished, of course. But I want to save for some like desires if they, after they do their combo. Um, or even like something that they go for the Tenny lines, you can Ash the uh, the Ashuna, but it's not always the play. And then Nib is is good against the deck, but they can play around it by making Baron as a third or the fifth summon. Um, 
So be wary of that. And then Droll's horrible against this deck. You know, there's no need to Droll it. And then D-Shifter. D-Shifter is like a mid. So it does hurt some of the variations of the deck. Uh, if they're playing like the Tenny stuff, it hurts a Tenny part of the deck. But it doesn't touch Sword Soul at all. So they don't really care about it. Um, which is important to note. Exo Sister. I was told to include this. So I got a shout out to Brian as well as Dan for this. But Exo Sister is like a deck that's coming out of the... Uh, out of the shadows now that a rise heart's gone um and, you know people are touching the graveyard again so ex-sisters do come live really you just want to stop martha martha's absolutely crazy you can either ash martha martha ash packs but packs all the time is going to be like a ash bait for the martha there but if you don't ash it and they already have martha um, or they search martha then you just ash it anyways uh, which it can be quite good and then you could imperm the spirit monster. Obviously, it's normal summon, so you cannot monitor it. But this can also stop because you want to stop level fours. You know, that's it's level four turbo here. And if you can stop a level four, you're doing pretty good. So either you want to imperm the Stella, which does let you to get to a level four um, or a rank four here, or stopping the Michaelis here can also be very good. Um, Nib is good against the deck when they overextend. But other than that, Droll and Shifter are very bad. This deck does play Shifter, so obviously it's not that good against it. Moving on to Tear. Tear is a deck that people just absolutely love and hate to let die. So we have to cover it, I guess. Um, I will never, ever, ever Ash Planet. I will always save Ash for either Shiren or Kalbeck. Um, ashing any of those, you know, Ashing a mil 5 is insane. And then Ashing, you know, a discard plus mil 3 is also pretty good. Um, and then of course you want a dd crow or bell any of these um any one of these is absolutely just like very nice to hit uh, you want to lose them they only have one merly one shiren and one Havness. so if you end up crowing it chances are they're not getting it back um so i want to be belling like, either the first one and then if they have tier king of the swamp in the graveyard i want to be very very careful of that card because that card itself can just create some very powerful um game states so all the time i want to either imperm or the uh, like if they start with a normal summon Merly, there are chances where I will just imprim the Merly for it not being able to mill. Um, as well as like you know, wanting to hit the Rhino Heart can be very nice as well because Rhino gets you so much with the send for just absolutely so free. Um, and then when we look at like Nib, Valor, and then D Shifter, D Shifter insane against the deck. You know, all the cards want to hit the graveyard and put back. D Shifter absolutely just an FTK here. Um, Troll can be good, but they play like during both turns of Scream, so they don't really want to always add, um, and they just can play all the time, as well as with Nib. Um, Nib is good if they don't set up in the gate, but otherwise, you know, it, it, it just triggers your stuff, and it's not always great as well. You have to be careful if they have like a tier on the field, or a Baron, or the Graph of Fusion. You know, activating anything under Graph of Fusion is always a risk, because they can just send one of their cards instead, and if they have like a Merle in hand, it just goes very hard there. Moving on to Vanquish Soul, a lot of players have forgotten about this deck, but the deck is very real as well as getting new support in the Age of Overlords. Um, so I wanted to cover it here. Ash on Staker Soul is quite good, um, as well as Valoring or Imperm the Rock. Rock is insane. So it has two effects here. Obviously, it adds back, and then that gets like it able to special summon out here as well. Um, so you add back from the graveyard and then next turn you special summon it But if you just leave the cards in the graveyard They have to either have another name another name in hand that they have to special summon or they just add back then So like if they want to activate the add back and you either have like Valor or um, Crow if you hit the target it can be quite good as well as like on their continue if you end up cracking their board And they don't have a way to get to continue um, or getting another monster on the field. Let's say like you Valor this and they set a continue. If they activate continue, they want to really like tag out because their monsters need a level four. I guess they need one in the main monster zone for it to activate. So they can't bounce back the rock for that effect to activate there. So like belling or DD crowing, they continue. Um, really lets them not continue, so which is very nice. Nib is good if they want to get greedy. You know, some builds are playing the Fenrir, so they special summon out Fenrir, activate the effect. You know, going to rock, that's going to be a three summons there. Then they can like activate the rock or spell summon out with continue there, which gets them to another summon and they start bouncing with heavy border, trying to get those draw ones in 
a lot of time they can just play greedy and then you just nib them. Um, and then shifter is not that great against a deck because of the fact that um, a lot of the time they'll just play under shifter. Like they are on the Tikaboo most of the time as well. So they'll just sit on that and then it's like quite unfortunate. But it is problematic for them if caught on gu off guard and they're not prepared for it. D shifter can quite end their turn um, as well. Moving on to Dinos. So this deck is quite real as well. It does take some wins a lot, as well as like it's just well represented in the community. People love this deck, and I don't really blame them. So obviously, as always, you want to stop Misk. Misk is at one, should be at three if you ask me. That's just another video there. Um, but Misk is a very crazy card. If you ask Misk, you can crow, you can crow Misk. Um, but a lot of time I want to ash the grounds, you know, if they haven't activated Misk. Like this is a three of, this is a one of. Um, so changes are if they don't have it, they'll either search it or if they already have it. Um, I want to just like stop the ground, you know, because there's just so much it can do. Adding the normal monster or the tuner just is very good against the deck. And then of course, like Adam and Archosaur and Soul Union Overraptor is just absolutely insane. You know, letting you search for the the pill and popping a baby or just searching for a monster um, that are sent it to the graveyard. You know, if you can search for Misk, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to hit it with a card that negates it. And then you also lose the effect of like you know tagging out. So if they do are playing the Lost World stuff, and they have Lost World on the field, and you hit the Over Raptor, um, they're unfortunately not able to anymore do their stuff like protecting the token with another card that has to destroy the other the that token they were to send from the deck. So it's quite good to be able to stop the Over Raptor. And I think people are always forgetting about this deck a lot as well. Nib can be very good in the deck, of course, if they don't have the Miscellaneousaurus. And then Shifter is crazy once again. You know, Shifter is absolutely insane in this format. Um, it just absolutely blows it out. And it just, it outright beats Misk. Now for Sprite. So Sprite is now so simple. It's actually crazy. Gigantic is insane spot. You always want to stop Gigantic. You know, this is the only thing. This is for Sprite and Sprite variants. Obviously, there's other stuff that Sprite variants do. But if Sprite's playing their stuff, you just want to ash the Sprite. The gigantic sprite and they just really can't play unless they have other stuff um and then if they don't if they they have if they start off with a starter and they don't really have any other ways to get level twos i would ask that you know wanting to stop if they have a handful of level twos but otherwise i want to stop the gigantic at any means necessary nib is very good if you do stop the gigantic because it does lock both of you guys into level twos so you know if you can drop nib on the gigantic summon very good but otherwise if you don't have a way to stop it i'd be very wary about the nib i wouldn't just side a nib i'd side in like at least imperms so you can actually guarantee that you your nib is going to be successful and they don't care about the uh the crows bells or anything like that because elf's no longer in the format so they don't really all right i guess it's banned now um but they don't really care if their stuff gets banished you know smash is the only thing that really cares about it and all that time they can play through it anyways so moving on into the runic variant here, um, stop stop Hugin, I guess. You know, Hugin and Fountain are both the absolute crazy cards here. Um, you know, Hugin gets you to Fountain, so you always want to stop it. But Fountain itself, you know, gets a plus three or a plus two, depending on what you really want. So if you have a way to stop it with either Bell or Crow, very good. Um, a lot of the time you want to either Ash the Hugin, which stops them getting to Fountain, or you can Ash the Tip as well. You know, very good cards. But otherwise, Fountain Access is just like really all it really is. Droll can be nice if they start with a Tip or a Hugans, but Fountains have them draw during either turn, so they just won't activate Fountain that turn, and they'll just be able to draw during the next turn. But it does stop them from drawing during both turns, so Droll can be very good. As well as Shifter. You know, Shifter, uh, Fountain wants to put back from the graveyard, so if they have no graveyard, they can't put back and draw, and that itself is stopping the draws. So you congratulations did what you wanted to do. Now for the final part of the uh, of the of the video here, we're going over the Super Sam engine. So Super Samurai is now really not a deck anymore. It's really an engine. We see it in some decks like the Sword Soul deck as well as um, like some Banker Soul decks as well. So I wanted to include it so people are able to uh, to really see what's going to go on. Droll is very. Um, very good against the Super Every Samurai engine. 
because they do either start with the motor bat, uh, motor bike, whatever. Um, so when they start off with the bike, I didn't even realize it's Spanish. That's my bad. Um, but if they start off with bike and they add Bokashi, if they're playing any of the engines, a lot of time their engine also wants to search. So if you're going to be drawing them there, they get like a Bokashi, then they cannot add as well with the Big Benki. And Big Benki either adds the Soul Piercer or the level 1 if they want to go for like in Sword Soul, for example. Going for the level 5 Yang Zing um, can be quite problematic. But all the time, I either want to ash the motorbike or ashing the Soul Piercer. Um, if they are playing like the more pure build. And then obviously crowing. Uh, a lot of the time like this will be either going for like a level 8 synchro or a level 5 synchro. Depending on what they really search here. Um, but I want to DD crow on the Excel, the motor motorbike. So they won't be able to make a level 10 there which is like really the point of the engine. It even makes a 5, 8 or a 10. So just be careful when you're playing against it. Because you will be seeing the Super Hero Samurai engine in some builds. Nib is very good against it because they do summon like automatically twice. Um, and then if they do like go into a something else, that's like a third summon and then a fourth summon. And then whatever their deck they're playing against, they want to summon as well. Um, so very good against this deck. You know, it stops. if you have a way to stop the Baron, um, very good. Droll, as we mentioned earlier, very good against the deck. And then Shifter as well, you know, stopping anything. Like the Pendulum Monsters, when they get sent to the, to the extra deck, they want to go to the graveyard. So how the mechanic works is that D-Shifter actually overrides the mechanic. Because Pendulum Monsters want to hit the grave. But because of game commandics, they want to go to the face-up extra deck. But due to D-Shifter, D-Shifter says any card that's sent to the graveyard. So Pendulum Monster will actually get banished instead. So Bokashi will not be able to activate its effects to put himself in the scale. And that itself can be huge if the deck wants a Pendulum Summon as well. And then of course, you know, Motorbike, um, you know, not being able to be reborn by the Excel is very good as well. Um, and as we saw with the other videos, or I guess the other slides, D-Shifter is a really a card of the format. So can be quite good as well other than that thank you for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment subscribe if you want to see some more content like this and if this video gets to 100 likes we'll do a board breaker format as well for the format um so you guys can be able to stop and if there's any other decks that we did miss let us know down in the comment section down below don't forget to stay safe and thank you for watching peace